It doesn't have to be a wow, aha, big story that brings us all to tears. Um, because if you truly are passionate and you're sharing it in your work, it may be a little bit, let's pull it together. <laughs> What's up YouTube? It's Josh Reese back at it again with another video. We are here again with Becca Godsill, the admissions counselor here at ASCOPT in Midwestern University. And today we're just going to talk about some admissions logistical questions about OptomCAS and getting your optometry application to look like the application you wish it would look like. So uh, we're going to just open up here to talk about what would you like your OAT and GPA to look like? And is there any factors you consider in there? So when we're looking at the OAT, we're taking into consideration that you have a total science section and an academic average section. Those are the areas that we're recommending be around those 300. Mm -hmm. um, one can be a little up, one can be a little down because we do kind of merge them together, but that's usually what the baseline is that we're looking for. And then as far as like your GPAs go, um, we do have the science and the overall GPA that we do look at. Um, the minimums obviously are those 275, but the higher you have, the more competitive you are. Um, one of the things that students don't usually take into consideration is that um, you've retaken classes, but both your original and your repeated grade are put into that GPA calculation. So your final GPA calculation through when you submit your application with OptumCast may look a little different than you expected it to. Um, I know some schools may look at your last 90 units, some may only look at your prereq GPA or your major GPA, um, so that's something to take into consideration when you're looking at the different schools. Um, for us, we do just use the science and the overall that comes from OptumCast though. Okay, so you want to have a higher science and overall, is that what the aim mm -hmm. is? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Or as long as they're both competitive. Both competitive is great, but okay. you know, if your science is higher than your overall, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. And what's your take on this? So I've heard some schools talk about how they like to add the GPA and the OAT together and to kind of take the average of them. Um, so like if you had a 300 OAT and a 3.5 GPA, they'd add those together and look at it as a 650 Oh, interesting. Together. I've not heard that. We okay. don't do that here. You so don't do that we here. don't do okay. that here. So... Um, and since we now take more than just the OAT, we take the other exams, mm -hmm. we have to look at your GPA separately from the different exams because they're graded differently. Okay. So that's a quick and easy one that other people may do, but mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, that, not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about letters of recommendation? I know that's a hot topic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to get people to write letters of recommendation in the first place, let alone get them to write good ones <laughs> and hard to even enough to choose people to write them. Yes. So what do you recommend with letters of recommendation? Yes, letters can be difficult, but they are a crucial process, part of your application process. Um, so most schools require at least two, one from preferably a professor, usually in the science realm, just because those are your harder courses, um, but we'll accept a professor just who happens to know you whether you were their TA or you just took six classes from them because you just really like the curriculum base they taught. But we want to see a letter from your professor that says, I actually knew who this applicant was, who this student was in my class, not just they were seat number 54 of 122. Um, we want to know that they can speak to who you are as a person and at your academic ability, not just give us your GPA stats of how you did in their class. Um, the other, so if you have two professors, one that you know you want in the science realm that's going to be like, oh, they were a good student in my class, but one who maybe was like a psych professor who was like, I really knew them, I talked to them every week, they're a great student, submit that third letter um, to somebody who can speak on your behalf and truly share with us who you are. That other letter that is required is from an optometrist, mm -hmm. and this is where having experience within the field comes as an important factor. So you need to either have shadowed and spent quality time shadowing somebody, or you worked in the office. We'll take experience either way, um, but if you have spent multiple days with someone, then they can write you a nice letter of recommendation more than just, hey, they spent three hours in my office today. I think they'd be good. You want somebody who can be like, yes, I saw them interact with a patient, I saw their passion, I saw their desire, they asked me some great questions. Someone who's going to write you a good letter is going to speak volumes for your application. Making sure you're connecting with the people who are going to write your letters. Um, letting them know, hey, I'm getting ready to submit my application. You're going to get this information. You're going to get this link. Mm -hmm. um, you do get a reminder that your letters are not in. So you can follow up with them and be like, hey, would you please 
Um, you don't want your, your application to be held up for months because it's missing a letter. Um, you may have to even switch who you asked to have write the letter just so you can get your application completed at that point if it's holding it up too much. Mm -hmm. I know that's one, that's the thing that I wasn't expecting. When I submitted my application, I was waiting, I hadn't taken my OAT yet, and so I was waiting for that, I waited about a month and then took it and then the scores went in. And I was like, okay, sweet, my application's finally in. And then I got a notification that my letters of recommendation mm -hmm. weren't submitted yet, so I had to send, it was three of the four people I had hadn't submitted it yet. So I mm -hmm. had to go send some emails being like, hey, the deadline was already. And so that's, that's true, you really do wanna do those ahead of time mm -hmm. and make sure they're submitted. Yeah, letting them know for sure that they're going to, you're gonna be reaching out to them to have them do it so they know it's coming and then kind of staying on top of it to be like, hey, could you get this done by such and such date and making sure you follow up with them. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it comes important mm -hmm. to, to connect with a professor and have that letter reflect that. In optometry school, you really need to be connected to all your professors because mm -hmm. if you're failing in a class, the worst nightmare of an, op the, an optometry school in general is to have someone who won't reach out and won't connect with the professor and they're just failing silently because there are resources mm -hmm. and they want everyone to become an optometrist that comes here. They're investing in you as much as you're investing in them. And so I think a good letter of rec from a professor says all of that as well. Mm -hmm. The optometrist letter of recommendation. I, I, the doctor that I worked for, um, we had someone come in and shadow once for almost a full shift. I think it was about three hours. And then the doctor said, oh, he just sent me a letter of recommendation. That's weird. I can't even remember his name. Or the day that mm -hmm. he came in. Yeah. Optometrists have a lot on their mind, so you they really do. do want to spend some, like you said, quality time mm -hmm. and don't avoid those one word letter recommendations. Yes. This person came to my office on the 25th Shout for out three to hours. hours. <laughs> and I, he was interested in optometry, I think. Mm -hmm. That's worst case scenario, yes. right? Want to yeah. make sure they're competitive. Absolutely. All right, what recommendations do you have as far as personal statement goes? I know that's one that I spent a lot of time on. Mm -hmm. So your personal statement is your is our first glimpse into you during your application that's not just let me list all my academics or my extracurriculars or somebody else writing about you and like in your letters. So it's our first glimpse into who you are that's just not pre-formatted. Um, so we like to see that you have shared what your passion is, why you want to be an optometrist, where you hope to go with it, um, you know, what brought you to it. And it's okay if it's just, uh, I've worn glasses all my life, you know, it doesn't have to be a wow, aha, big story that brings us all to tears. There are some that do, um, but we know every story is not going to be that, but mm -hmm. it's uh, just sharing that and that we can see that this is your true passion and your interest. My biggest re recommendations are to make sure that after you've written it, have somebody else proof it. Mm -hmm. um, have somebody else to make sure the grammar's correct, it expresses what you wanna do, the flow's correct, um, and then before you submit, maybe even have two or three people give you some feedback um, just to make sure that it's expressing how you wanted it to or maybe they can give you some insight of, hey, this part was really good, elaborate a little bit more on it or you elaborate a little too much on this, let's scale it back a little bit. Um, because if you truly are passionate and you're sharing it in your work, it may be a little bit, let's pull it together. Um, yeah. But they can give you some good perspective on that too, and then you know you've submitted the best that you can. For personally, I had my wife proofread it, my sister who's an English teacher oh, there you go. proofread it, and then my uh, pre-optometry or pre-health advisor read it. And I think that's, you really want kind of a few people to get mm -hmm. their eyes on it to make sure the grammar is good. It really reflects mm -hmm. you as a person. It does. I like what you said there that it's their, It's really the only chance they get to know you because mm -hmm. the rest are just numbers. And if your number's on a page, that's not reflective of what an optometrist is. Yep, so, so. yeah, it's our first glimpse. And our faculty do do read it mm -hmm. um, on your interview day. They read your personal statement before you interview with them. So they have your background before they come in. Yeah, I know. I mentioned briefly in there that I was like, this is what I plan to do with optometry. And I was very surprised when one of the doctors of optometry that was interviewing me said, so you want to do this, huh? And I was like, oh, they, they know me. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't no, uh, let's get through a uh, hundred people here in an interview mm -hmm. day. They really take time to, to read it. So, me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much That's for right. giving us this advice, Becca. And we'll see you next time. Good luck, everyone.